Okay, so this is part two, I guess the practical bit of uh, the lecture on using design of experiments and response surface modeling to help you uh, with your aircraft design optimization. Um, so I've opened up MATLAB, um, and the nice thing about all of this is that MATLAB have actually created a little uh, demo that kind of guides you through everything that I was talking about um, in part one of the lecture. Um, so if you open up MATLAB and type in at the command line RSM demo, uh, this will guide you through a demonstration using um, a nice little example of how this works in practice within MATLAB. So if you hit RSM demo, uh, you should see these various windows pop up. Um, now this will be a, a useful reference for you because this will guide you through in detail exactly what's going on uh, behind the scenes within MATLAB, which again might help you in terms of writing up uh, if you use this tool as part of your design, writing up that app and explaining it in the report that you're going to produce. But essentially we've got now a three parameter problem um, and it's a chemistry experiment uh, where you want to gain some understanding of how the amounts or concentrations of hydrogen, n-pentane and isopentane affect a particular reaction rate. Now I don't understand the chemistry of this, I, I'm not a chemist, um, but we can do some virtual experiments within MATLAB to create the data set. Now before we use the the Latin hypercube sampling tool that I uh, talked about in the first part of this lecture, um, we'll just see what happens. I mean what you could do if you wanted to you know get some understanding is just is just randomly try different values okay um, and if you click on the run tab here this will do a virtual experiment where it'll take We'll assume that you've got 396 hydrogen, 150 n-pentane, 50 isopentane. It's done a experiment, a virtual experiment, and given you a reaction rate of 3.5. I'm not sure what these units are, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, now your design approach mi so far might have been a little bit haphazard, like this, where you're just trying uh, random combinations of parameters. Um, you might have tried different NACA codes, just because. Uh, there were data sets available that you were able to download from online, but there was no systematic approach to studying how the various parameters in your particular design um, combine. So let me just, so I'm just going to, so this is what I'm doing initially, just showing you what happens if you just do random combinations of these things. So I'll do, uh, keep doing a few more. Okay. So let's say we've got 13. There we go. So 13 is the max I could do in this demo anyway. So let's close that. So I've got down here a set of data uh, where I've done 13 experiments with different values of hydrogen, n-pentane, and isopentane to give me different reaction rates. Now, you know, you could just look at this data, eyeball it, try plotting it in Excel. Um, you know, we can see that here you've got your two highest values of the reaction rate, you could have a look at, well, what's common about those things? Well, both of these, no, we had 100 and 248 hydrogen. Both of these had very high levels of n-pentane. So you might start thinking, to yourself, well, obviously, or perhaps n-pentane levels are what control the reaction rate. That's the important thing. But the reality is, it might be a complex function of these three things that, that, that determines your reaction rate. So the next stage we'll do is try and fit a response surface, fit a function to this data. And we can have a go at doing this by hitting the Analyze button. Um, and this is what you get back if you use the response surface modeling tool uh, within MATLAB. Um, and what, what it's done is, in this box here, you can choose the different functions that it will try and fit to your data. So initially we've just got a linear function, so we're just as assuming that uh, the function is linear combinations of those three input parameters. So obviously the predicted responses of, of your reaction rate, which are on the y-axis here, are going to be straight lines. That's the, the, the green line is the prediction. And then these red dashed lines give you certainty bands. Uh, so if you're within those red lines, you're within uh, a 95% certainty band that that the prediction is uh, correct. Again, you can look at the exact def statistical definitions of these things in the uh, the MATLAB user guide for this tool.
but we could say, well, let's try a different function. Uh, what do we get if we try a quadratic function? Um, the important thing to think about is, well, what happens to the error bands? Well, it looks like the error bands have got bigger, so the linear f the linear function fit seemed better. Um, and there are four different functions that you can try fitting to this data within the uh, response surface tool in MATLAB. So if you try a full quadratic function, it looks like towards the centre of the design space, around about here, the error bands are fairly tight, but towards the edges of the design space, particularly for the n pentane value, um, the error bars are really big. So that so so the data out here or the the predictions out here are less trustworthy than they are in the centre of the design space. So let's go back to the linear one. That seems to fit our data best. Um, and what can we tell from this? Well, these bars here allow us to to move around within the design space. So, so, so if I move the n pentane level to this value, 192, um, it gives you an idea of how the other parameters are varying at this point in the design space. And, and the first thing you get back from this, which is nice and neat, is a prediction of, well, it seems to be at this, certainly at this point within the design space, these parameter values decreasing the hydrogen values decrease the reaction rate, increasing the n-pentane value increases the reaction rate, which is in line with what we kind of visually observed on that data, and increasing the isopentane levels uh, decrease the reaction rate. But what the um, so, so that's kind of a visual interpretation of the data, um, but also the RS tool will give you back that function. So you could actually analytically analyze uh, the response surface function that um, has come back to you. But we can be even better than that because if we first, if rather than just randomly haphazardly sampling that design space, um, we we sample it systematically using Latin hypercube sampling, which is what this box allows us to do. So this is going to sample a design space at the most efficient um, positions, or what are perceived to be statistically the most efficient positions. And I think it's going to do 13 of them. So on the left we've got our, our kind of haphazard sampling, and on the right we've got our systematic sampling. We can run a response surface on this, and um, what we should find, in general, is that you get um, a better accuracy over, over a fuller range of the design space, going right out to the edges of the design space, um, you get better predictions um, of how your variables affect the response uh, of the thing you're measuring. Um, so to get your head around how that works, you can use the command rs M demo, but once you want to have a go at yourself at doing this, there are two commands that basically use uh, those tools that, that are within that demo. Uh, the first one is LHS design. So if I just do a help LHS design, uh, this is the function within MATLAB that will create uh, or tell you where to sample your design space. So the inputs to this function are, there are two values that go into it. N is the number of sampling points uh, that you want to use. P um, are the number of parameters that you have in your problem, and that will give you um, the sampling positions back. Um, again, if you, I'll leave you to explore this for yourself, um, exactly how this works. Um, and the other one is RS tools. So if we type help RS tool. This is the function that will do that response surface modeling for you. An RS tool requires three inputs. The first one is the sampling. Now that will so this X matrix here is essentially what comes out of the LHS design function. So this is a matrix listing the the parameters at which you've uh, sampled the design space. Y is then the response to that, so this could be the results of CFD studies, so that could be the list of lift-to-drag lift to drag ratios uh, resulting from each of the designs you've sampled, and then this will be the type of model, linear interaction, quadratic or pure quadratic, that you want to try and uh, fit to your data. So you can start having a play with that, um, 
again there's no you know there's no absolute requirement for you to use this I'm not saying you have to use this tool but um, it might be useful uh, certainly for some of the teams uh, to use to, to use a to have a more systematic approach uh, for this stage the optimization stage of your design